maybe a, a potential college player to coming a big time college player. Can you just briefly run through your journey from being a freshman guy out there and throwing up an air ball to here you're out in the final four? Yeah, it's been a long, long journey. Um, a lot of ups and downs, but I mean, I think just at the end of the day, um, just glad where I'm at. Everything fell into place. And I'm just excited to be here. What kind of pride do you take? Not only represent Purdue, but representing the high school and coaching all those people that play football on the morning. Yeah, I think that's just what I do on an everyday basis. Just represent myself, my family, my friends, coaching staff, Purdue and Westfield. And I think just being able to take every day and remembering those things. Like, hey, you're representing a lot of people. Um, it just goes one way. Getting here was the goal, right? But actually walking in, seeing everything, how you guys feeling? How's that experience? Yeah, no, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm just glad to be here. Um, last year, I mean, we were sitting watching these games. So just being here and being a part of it and being a part of stuff like this, it's just super awesome. You guys have been focused on yourselves, all business, but have you been able to see NC State and kind of the run they've been on to get here in 11 seed, the five games in five days to even make the tournament? And then we'll see what yeah. They do. yeah, no, I've heard all about it, and I've watched a couple games of them, and they're a great team. they got a lot of experience, a lot of good players, so I mean, it's going to be a tough game, and I'm looking forward to it. How do you make that balance of you know staying focused in, all being business while kind of trying to soak it, in, soak it all in, soak in the moment of everything? Yeah, Paint says make your hard work fun. So just listening to that and sticking to that every day, just working hard but also having fun while doing that. I mean, it just goes a long way. So. It's just, a, go ahead. How much of Burns is going to be putting the ball screens too and really making him work before he has to get the Zach? Yeah, I mean, we got to figure out a lot of different things. Who he's guarding, if he's going to be on TK, if he's going to be on Z. Just, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff before that we have to figure out. Um, but, I mean, we're just going to stick to our game plan and what we do. We're not going to go off of what they do. We're just going to stick to what we do and what, what has been working. Are things going to be different in these games than they were in Indianapolis and Detroit because of the stakes, because of the environment, because of the spotlight, so to speak? I mean, I think it's just a little bit different, yeah. I mean, there's... 60k people here and I mean it's just the final four games so I mean it's definitely gonna have a little bit bigger you know effect on us but I mean I think we'll be fun. Obviously in India you had a bunch of fans there and in Detroit as well but all indications are going to be a huge turnout for the Boilermakers here. How special is that to have them behind you through everything you've been through and now with the final four? Yeah I think it just shows a lot just of what our program is and who those people are. I mean for us to have sold out crowds and not not only at home but like on away games as well like it's just unbelievable. How do you make the challenges just to try to figure out how to handle something that big does some of the things he does? Yeah no he's I mean he is big but like he can move real well too so I mean it's definitely going to be a challenge and I don't think we've really seen a guy like him that we've played yet so I mean it's definitely going to be a challenge and we're looking forward to it. If you were just a spectator, how fun a matchup would it with Zach versus DJ Burns be to watch? Yeah, I mean, I think in a, in a way I, I still am spectating it, um, <laughs> just a little bit closer than other people. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's going to be a good battle. I mean, two really good big guys are just going at it and playing for the team. Has Braden, it sunk in that, you, that you're here when you walk off the bus and you saw all the signage and you walked in the State Farm or Stadium for the first time today for practice? Has it sunk in that you guys are really here? Yeah, it hit a little bit. I think it hit when we got in the hotel room when I saw all the goodies bags on my uh, bed. I kind of freaked out a little bit because I thought that was cool. Um, so right kind of once that hit, I was just super excited and kind of let it all hit us and we kind of realized it. So you've always had the supreme confidence about yourself. Was there a time maybe early in your playing career where you kind of doubted what you could do on a court? Yeah, I think it started um, right when I first played AAU. Um, I played on a Team Teague team, and we played in the Nationals. Um, and I didn't really play a whole lot. I didn't play well, and I wanted to quit that weekend. And it was just a just slight memory of it. Um, but I just remember from then on, I didn't like that feeling, so I just worked really hard ever since to not feel that way again. Do you know how old you were when that happened? Got to be like third or fourth grade. Okay. Got to be. Obviously, you know, people kind of defined you on things you can't do. At Westfield, you go through and beat three ranked teams to win a sectional for the first time in school history. You come back at this year and, and this team gets to the final four. How does that kind of drive you, the, just the people that think this guy can't do it? I love it. I love it. I, I genuinely do. I think it's the best thing in sports when people say you can't do something, you go out and do it. And I think it's just like a, just a big punch back in the face. I know.
credit for the group. This is obviously this is the men's tournament, but you know the women's tournament has gotten a lot of pub lately. They do have LSU and Iowa game and all that stuff. Just have you been watching and like what do what do you think about the women's game this year being so popular? Yeah, no, I, I watch uh, a lot of it actually. Um, I I'm a big fan of Kate Clark. I think everybody is. So um, I watch her games when we can and just watching her play and how she handles herself on the court, but also off the, off the court as well. And it's, it's a huge deal, and they're doing a great job. So, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of buzz around the tournament about the ball, the Evo ball. And some people don't like it. It feels different. Some people say it's overinflated. Some crazy clips of people dribbling the ball, bouncing yeah. it over their head. Have you felt, does it feel different? Uh, to you? Um, no, I think we've played in a lot of games now, um, like any classic games, um, Maui, just a bunch of other places where we played with that basketball. I mean, personally, it's a basketball at the end of the day and everybody's using it, so there's no excuse. I just think it's just, you know, different than other times. What about the stadium? Have you ever played in a football stadium before? I have not. <laughs> oh, the shooting backgrounds out there. It's fine. It's just, yeah, I mean, it just took a little second to get used to, but other than that, it's good. I'm sure one of the biggest things, you know, you guys have been talking and talking about with me all year is you upset last year. 